and tales for dark nights. The following performance is a third round entry in the 2016 Evil Idol voice acting competition. And you, the listener, get to help decide who wins. If you'd like to hear more of this contestant, voting for them is simple and only takes a moment. Just click the thumbs up icon. Can't stand them? Then click the thumbs down icon instead and cast them into the digital nether realm from whence they came. You decide their fate. Good luck to all of our contestants. Autopilot by Reddit user Scarjo Narrated by Kira Greif Have you ever forgotten your phone? When did you realize you'd forgotten it? I I'm guessing you didn't just smack your forehead and exclaim, Damn, and propose of nothing. Realization probably didn't dawn on you spontaneously. More likely, you reached for your phone, pawing open your pocket or handbag, and were momentarily confused by it not being there. Did a mental restep of the morning's events? Oh, shit. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as normal, but I realized the battery was lower than I expected. It was a new phone and it had this annoying habit of leaving applications running that drained the battery overnight. So, I put it onto charge while I showered instead of into my bag like normal. It was a momentary slip from the routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain got back into the routine it follows every morning, and that was it. Forgotten. This wasn't just me being clumsy, as I later researched. This is a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't just work on one level, it works on many. Like when you're walking somewhere, you think about your destination and avoiding hazards, but you don't think about keeping your legs moving properly. If you did, the entire world would turn into one massive, hilarious QWOP cosplay. I wasn't thinking about regulating my breathing. I was thinking about whether I should grab coffee on the drive to work. I did. I wasn't thinking about moving my breakfast through my intestines. I was wondering whether I'd finish on time to pick up my daughter Emily from nursery after work or get stuck with another late fee. This is the thing. There's a level of your brain that just deals with routine so that the rest of the brain can think about other things. Think about it. Think about your last commute. What do you actually remember? Little, if anything, probably. Most common journeys blur into one, and recalling any one particular is scientifically proven to be difficult. Do something often enough, and it becomes routine. Keep doing it, and it stops being processed by the thinking bit of the brain and gets reallocated to a part of the brain dedicated to dealing with routine. Your brain keeps doing it without you thinking about it. Soon, you think about your route to work as much as you think about keeping your legs moving when you walk. As in, not at all. Most people call it autopilot. But there's danger there. If you have a break in your routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain going into routine mode. My ability to remember my phone being on the counter is only as reliable as my ability to stop my brain entering morning routine mode, which would dictate that my phone is actually in my bag. But I didn't stop my brain entering morning routine mode. I got in the shower as normal, routine started, exception forgotten, autopilot engaged. My brain was back in the routine. I showered, I shaved, the radio forecast, amazing weather. I gave Emily her breakfast and loaded her into the car. She was adorable that morning. She complained about the bad sun in the morning blinding her, saying it stopped her having a little sleep on the way to the nursery. And left. That was the routine. 
It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently. My brain was in the routine, and in the routine, my phone was in my bag. This is why I forgot my phone. Not clumsiness, not negligence. Nothing more than my brain entering routine mode and overriding the exception. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It's a swelteringly hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since before my traitorously absent phone woke me. The steering wheel was burning hot to the touch when I sat down. I think I heard Emily shift over behind my driver's seat to get out of the glare. But I got to work, submitted the report, attended the morning meeting. It's not until I took a quick coffee break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental restep. I remembered the dying battery. I remembered putting it onto charge. I remembered leaving it there. My phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, therein lies the danger. Until you have that moment, the moment you reach for your phone and shatter the illusion, that part of the brain is still in routine mode. It has no reason to question the facts of the routine. That's why it's a routine. Attrition of repetition. It's not as if anyone could say, Why didn't you remember your phone? Didn't it occur to you? How could you forget? You must be negligent. This is to miss the point. My brain was telling me the routine was completed as normal, despite the fact that it wasn't. It wasn't that I forgot my phone. According to my brain, according to the routine, my phone was in my bag. Why would I think to question it? Why would I check? Why would I suddenly remember, out of nowhere, that my phone was on the counter? My brain was wired into the routine, and the routine was that my phone was in my bag. day continued to bake. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. Tarmac bubbled. The direct beams of heat threatened to crack the pavement. People swapped coffees for iced smoothies. Jackets discarded. Sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, brows mopped. The parks slowly filled with sunbathers and baby cures. Window frames threatened to warp. The thermometer continued to swell. Thank fuck the offices were air-conditioned. But as ever, the furnace of the day gave way to a cooler evening. Another day, another dollar. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked the inside of the car, releasing a horrible smell from somewhere. When I arrived on the driveway, the stones crunching comfortingly under my tires, my husband greeted me at the door. Where's Emily? Fuck. As if the phone wasn't bad enough. After everything, I'd left Emily at the fucking nursery after all. I immediately sped back to the nursery. I got to the door and started practicing my excuses, wondering vainly if I could charm my way out of a late fee. I saw a piece of paper stuck to the door. Due to vandalism overnight, please use side door today only. Overnight? What? The door was fine this morning. I froze. My knees shook. Vandals. A change in the routine. My phone was on the counter. I, I hadn't been here this morning. My phone was on the counter. I, I'd driven past because I was drinking my coffee. I, I, I'd not dropped Emily off. My, my phone was on the counter. She, she, she moved her seat. I hadn't seen her in the mirror. My phone was on the counter. She'd fallen asleep out of the bad sun. She didn't speak when I drove past her nursery. My, my phone was on the counter. She, she changed the routine. My, my, on the counter. She she changed the routine, and I'd forgotten to drop her off. My, my, my phone 
was out, was, was on the counter. In nine hours. That car, that baking sun. No air, no water, no power, no help. That heat, a, a steering wheel, too hot to touch. That smell. I walked to the car door. Numb. Shock. I opened the door. My phone was on the counter, and my daughter was dead. Autopilot disengaged. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. By doing so, You'll help us determine who will become the next permanent member of our voice acting team. At the close of voting on September 23rd, based on your votes, the top five contestants will progress to the fourth and final round to take place live on October 31st at our annual Halloween live stream event, based entirely on your votes. Thank you for voting and for helping to spread the word. You're listening to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, I'm Steve Taylor, host of Chilling Tales, the podcast, encouraging you to turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.